So have you ever been in a car and hear a song coming through your speakers and instantly remember all the words? Do memories ever know time or place, and usually this is the case, events flood your brain? That happens to me all the time. If I'm on my way to work or even walking down the street, a song may hits my ears and bam, I'm somewhere else. Remembering the good times or the bad times. I've even had it happen to me when I've overheard music from another source, like in a grocery store. Actually, that seems to happen a lot in grocery stores. But that's what this channel is about. My musical memories. Things that flood my head when hearing a specific song. Boombaya by Blackpink. This song is obviously still very popular. I mean, Blackpink has over 1 billion views as of this writing for just this song. But there's a reason for that. It's just great. K-pop and J-pop, Japanese pop, are genres of music that I don't have a huge history with. But as with most things that grab my attention, I, heard, I got into the music when I first heard it, and I got into it pretty deeply. I used to joke that I learned Korean from Bumbaya and Japanese from the Ronda One Half theme song. My first exposure to Blackpink was on YouTube. The algorithm pushed Kill This Love to me. So, like a sheep, I gave it a listen. I wasn't really paying attention to the screen, but the music was catchy. Then my wife told me to play it again, actually watch the music video. I did what I was told, of course, and, well, my head exploded. The production, the visual variety, the dancing were all things I hadn't seen before, or at least not in a very, very long time. I grew up not really watching music videos. I'd seen some, but this was something else. This reminded me of another era, an era where Michael Jackson was dancing his precisely choreographed music to, to the camera. Whoever made the video for Kill This Love really thought about the joy of making the music video. It wasn't just about the hot girls, I mean, yeah, they were there, but somehow about the music and everything that seemed to grab the viewer's attention, almost in spite of how the, the vocalists looked. My wife said to me it kind of reminded her of the very expensive rap videos that swarmed MTV during the 90s, and I agree with her. It felt like something special was going on. It's funny, though. I didn't expect to have that kind of reaction. The song title, Kill This Love, had me believing that it was a revenge song, sung by a girl who somehow got hosed by a guy. I thought it was going to be an angry song. Now, granted, I don't speak a lick of Korean. I'm pretty sure Kill This Love is not about that at all. And I'm very, very happy to be so dramatically wrong. Blackpink was blowing up on YouTube at the time. I mean, yeah, they still are. But then it was much more severe so I had no trouble finding their other songs. I was surprised to find out that the back catalog wasn't that big either. Blackpink music had only been coming out for a few years. Not what I expected when I looked at the viewer count in their videos. They really promoted themselves well. They would post their official video with production value oozing everywhere. Their dance practice videos with the girls just dancing to the music and even the teeny tiny videos showing upcoming songs or albums. Those clocked in at 30 seconds total, and they got millions and millions of views. Now, I think they knew the music must be something special, though. I mean, those views couldn't be the internet perverts stealing a glimpse of their latest crush, so I, I looked into them. I stumbled onto the song, Bumbaya, around then, a weird title, that left me with questions. Questions that I still haven't found an answer to, due to the fact that I actually don't know what they're singing about. But it's catchy, so I kept listening. I'm pretty sure I also heard this song in a trailer for some kind of Kung Flu Netflix movie. I don't know which one. I didn't actually watch the movie. But I figured if Netflix was willing to pay the price, because it was probably a big, huge licensing fee for the song, I should at least give the song a listen. I remember baking while listening to this song. I mean, it was a work, of course. My wife would never let me bake in the kitchen. She'd think I'd probably break something or ruin the food. And, you know, she'd be right. Well, I mean, back then she would have been. But here I am at 5 a.m. listening to Boombaya through my Bluetooth speaker while I ran around the baking preparing pizza buns and grabbing bread out of the ovens. It really got me in the mood to move. I would even keep it playing while other staff came into the store, in a strange hope that they would get intrigued as I had been. I don't know if it ever happened. But I do know that I was dancing around like a madman. I know that for most of us, our first exposure to K-pop was the huge hit Gangnam Style. It was everywhere. I mean, it was the first YouTube video to ever hit a billion views, I think. And I really liked that song as well. 
this was all K-pop music. I didn't have any idea what the guy was singing about. But it didn't matter, because the music was so good. But Gangnam Style didn't lead me down the path to Blackpink. The song came out in 2012. Holy crap, I didn't realize it had been that long. Damn. My interest in Blackpink didn't start until around 2019. In between, I hadn't heard any K-pop that I can recall. I don't even think I even heard of BTS during this time. I mean, I know who they are now. I don't like any of their music, but I do understand that they're quite popular. So it wasn't a straight line to kill this love. It took time. Time filled with my regular musical fare. But when I found them, I dug deep into their music. Their older stuff wasn't as good. I mean, it didn't get me as pumped to go out and do things. But it wasn't BTS bad either. They hadn't been making music that long either. So I had no problem finding their earlier works. Again, not the greatest stuff. But at least they were available. Because of my first exposure to Blackpink was through video, I remember seeing my wife complain that the music videos hadn't been like that since the late 90s. I agree. Most of the video seems to be reduced with little, little creativity or visual interest nowadays. Back then, we had Missy Elliott doing crazy dances in a garbage bag and Tupac driving around a Mad Max set. That kind of flair seems to have left the music industry for a while. Until Blackpink started to show the world what choreography and catchy music could be. No one seemed to mind that we didn't know what the hell they were singing about. It was like watching a French movie in French class in high school, without the subtitles. Remember, you were supposed to learn, be learning the language. It didn't really it would help anyone I knew learn French. All it did was give us crazy ideas about the story and let us perform our own inappropriate dubbing of those French movies. It seemed like K-pop in general had a, has a very different idea of what a music video should be. They believe it should be music and visual feast for the viewer to see, and they can go out of their way to make sure that that happens. And because I liked it so much, I was compelled to show it to my friends. After the oogling of the girls for a few minutes, we finally got into the music, grooving, grooving and butchering the Korean language while singing along. I'm really glad I don't live in a bigger city, because we probably would have offended more than a few Koreans with our version of this song. And then my, my wife and best friend got creative. And it would forever change the way I hear that song. There's a part of the chorus to Bumbaya, and they make a noise. It's very hard to describe. So I'm just going to put in a clip right here. Yeah, they changed that to turkey noises. I mean, my wife does a great impression of a turkey well, making turkey noises. I don't know what else turkeys do, but make turkey noises and, t and be tasty. And now whenever I hear this song, and the, the turkey comes out, and we all giggle around like idiots. It's even worse when Sean joins in, because everyone knows two squawking turkeys is always funnier than one. Somehow weirder, too. During Thanksgiving, while driving around picking up our bird, my closest friends are making turkey noises at the top of their lungs with the windows down all while we drive down the road. People on the street that day certainly got quite a strange show. But even while doing that craziness, they still seemed to like the song. Well, I guess that must be speak volumes for Blackpink. The language barrier made me realize something simple. As long as you have a catchy beat, emotional vocals doesn't really matter what you sing about. I mean, nobody can understand what the emotional vocals are. But they fit really well into the song. So, sing whatever you want. As long as you've got good music, that's what matters. And, well, I mean, the turkey sounds. The turkey sounds help a lot. Thanks for listening to a story that fell out of my head. If you've ever had friends try to make fun of a song you like, please let me know. And if you want to share your own turkey noises, that would be great, too. The more turkeys, the better. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time.